Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of pacemakers in people who have atrial fibrillation. In this video I'm going to ex um, describe two situations in which patients with atrial fibrillation may benefit from pacemakers. So let's get started. The first thing to say is that atrial fibrillation is both a disorder of heart rhythm and heart rate. In atrial fibrillation the heart beats irregularly uh, but also the heart can go excessively and unnecessarily fast and excessively and unnecessarily slow and both of these can exist in the same patient so what we can find what we see often on um, 24-hour ECGs is that a patient's heart rate may be going excessively fast during the daytime and at night you see the heart going excessively slow. What do I mean by excessively slow? Um, I mean uh, where the heart sort of doesn't beat for three, four, five seconds. Anything above three seconds is abnormal so it's not uncommon we see people with excessively slow heart rates where the heart doesn't beat for four or five seconds. The problem with an excessively slow heart rate is that uh, when the heart is beating very slowly, the heart is probably not getting as much blood out to the vital organs. And because the brain is the furthest away from uh, the ground, this is the most difficult place for the blood to get to. And therefore, excessively slow heart rates can present with symptoms of dizziness, feeling vacant, or even blackouts. And because atrial fibrillation tends to be seen more in the elderly, falls in the elderly are really dangerous because they can result in fractures, they can result in bleeds in the head, etc. So, and what we also see is that often the, the two things coexist in the same patient. So you can see the fast heart rates at times and the slow heart rate at times. And the problem is obvious that you cannot control the fast heart rates without risking slowing the slow bits even more and thereby causing the patient symptoms like falls etc. The solution in this kind of situation then is to say well why don't we put a pacemaker in because the, all that a pacemaker does is it sits there and it stops the heart going too slowly. So you put a pacemaker in to stop the heart going too slowly and then you give the patient medications to stop the fast bits going too fast. So this is one situation in which a pacemaker can be very helpful in patients with atrial fibrillation. This condition where you get a fast heart rate and a slow heart rate in the same patient is called tachybrady syndrome. Okay, tachybrady syndrome. Now, in terms of pacemakers, if the patient is continuously in atrial fibrillation, then an, only a single lead pacemaker is necessary. Normally, you have two leads. You have a lead which goes in the ventricle and you have a lead that goes in the atria. However, if the patient is continuously in atrial fibrillation, the atria aren't working, so you don't need a lead in the atria. You just need a lead in the ventricle. And basically, you can set the pacemaker on a demand mode. So the pacemaker just sits there. It's just sensing. It's not doing anything else. And if it finds that the heart rate drops below a certain amount, which is pre-programmed, then the pacemaker fires and therefore the heart rate will not fall below that pre-programmed level. If you have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, so if you have atrial fibrillation that comes and goes, in that case the atria are still working when the patient is not in atrial fibrillation and therefore a two-lead pacemaker is better. And the reason a two-lead pacemaker is better is because it preserves the direction of the current within the heart. Remember with a one-lead pacemaker the electrical current is going the other way, it's going from the bottom from the ventricle outwards. But with a two-lead um, pacemaker, you can have the uh, conduction, the electrical conduction in the right direction. So from the atria to the ventricle. Um, and um, it, there is also good evidence that where you have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and you put a two-lead pacemaker, a dual chamber pacemaker, then you can actually reduce future paroxysms of atrial fibrillation. So, one of those uh, situations that is tachybrady syndrome where a pacemaker is useful. There is another situation in which a pacemaker may be useful in patients with atrial fibrillation. Now, as I've described, uh, that, pace, uh, that atrial fibrillation is a disorder of heart rate. 
and there are some people in whom the heart rate goes excessively fast. The problem with the heart going excessively fast is that um, it causes symptoms, it can cause uh, you to feel fatigued, it can cause people to become breathless, it causes exercise intolerance. It also, if the heart is left to beat very fast for a prolonged period of time, can result in the heart weakening over a period of time. This is called a tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. So wherever po possible, doctors don't like to let the heart beat excessively and un unnecessarily fast, and therefore they try and add in medications to try and slow the heart down. Unfortunately, despite all the medications, some people still keep going fast. You can't slow the heart down in some people, and therefore you're in a dilemma, because if you let the heart keep going fast, then you risk the heart weakening with time. But then if you have um, exhausted all your medical options, what do you do? And in those people, what you can do is you can block the connection between the atria and the ventricles. I, this is called an AV node ablation, where you actually ablate the AV node, which conducts the impulses from the top to the bottom. So the ventricles are no longer listening to the atria. So the ventricles will not beat as per what the atria tell them to. Now the ventricles have nothing to listen to, so you then implant a pacemaker, and the pacemaker tells the ventricles to fire, and the atria just do their own thing. They continue to fibrillate, but the ventricles now become regular because the ventricles are being dictated by the pacemaker, not the atria. So this is an unusual situation where you can be still be in atrial fibrillation, but the heart can beat regularly because the heart is being directed by the pacemaker. And this is called pace and ablate. This strategy is called pace and ablate. And whilst it can seem quite daunting because you think, well, you're, you're ablating this AV node, so you know now I'm dependent on the pacemaker, the truth is that when you look at the data, it seems that people's quality of life seems to improve um, if they're getting symptoms from having this persistently fast heart rate, when you offer them pace and ablate and when you do this, their quality of life improves significantly. Also, research so far has not shown that these people do worse in the long run compared to people who haven't had this. So pace and ablate can certainly improve symptoms but does not seem to adversely impact lifespan, which is really uh, good news. Uh, and nevertheless, it's an invasive thing. It requires a pacemaker, and it's not something that people would do lightly. But if the heart is um, going excessively fast or is beginning to weaken, then this would be an option. So I hope this was useful. I would love to hear what you uh, thought of this video. If you get a chance, please consider sharing it. And I'd be really, really grateful if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. I'm desperate to try and get the channel uh, doing better. So uh, I would really value your help. Thank you so much. All the best.